Hello, this is Smokin' Joe Gamer on Twitch, YouTube, Mastodon, Discord, etc. Today I decided to do another episode of Joey Hates Everything. This is episode number two, Returnal. I'm Joey, and I hate everything. Not really, but you'll see. I'll play this game for a little while and explain to you exactly why I don't like it. And you can agree or disagree. I don't care. And, yeah, these videos are intended for mature audiences because I swear a lot and I play a lot of mature-rated games. And, yeah, these videos are intended. Okay. So... Let's get this show on the road. Right now I'm in photo mode. So I guess I can start with some positive statements here. Um, graphics are amazing, right? So this was, uh, I believe this was a PS5 launch title, or at least within the launch window. May have come out a few months after that. But, um, yeah. Yeah. But even still, excellent graphics, I will say that. Excellent performance at 60 frames per second. It doesn't have... Um... Yeah, see... It does not have a quality or performance mode. It just looks and runs great to start with. So, positive things, right? You can see there's no frame rate drops. And then, you know, it's a th it's got the over the shoulder view, so it's kind of like a third person shooter, right? It's also a roguelike, it's also a bullet hell. So there's a lot going on here. And you got this neat little map. When I first played this, I mean, yeah, I paid 70 bucks for this when I got the PS5. And it kind of reminded me of Metroid a little bit, just in the sense of, like, the first time you play Metroid, you know, you're on this alien planet, whether it's Brinstar, whether it's Talon 4, or whatever. And you're just kind of dumped on this planet, and there's, like, irrecognizable flora and fauna to look at. And everything's really dark and mysterious, so, yeah, I kind of get a Metroid vibe from this. But then you actually start playing the game and you're like, oh yeah, this is like harder than Metroid. Because <laughs> at least the original Metroid, yeah, that's a hard game. But when you die, you go back to the elevator and whatever area you're exploring and you don't lose any real progress. But this is a roguelike. So every time you die back to the start of the run with nothing. And there are some things like this nifty sword. There are a couple things that carry over, but unlike, let's say, Hades, Undermine, Rogue Legacy, you know, unlike uh, unlike a lot of those other roguelike games, you don't really get any meaningful upgrades between runs. So it's just a hard game. And it just doesn't get easier. I mean, I've been told, oh, hey, once you beat the first boss, it gets much easier. You know, the second, the, the later biomes are easier than the first. It's like, yeah, but I can't beat the first boss. It's too hard. It's like, I don't care what's in the other biomes if, if I can't get there. So you've got a dash. You can run. You can dash. You can jump. You have a sword. You have, you start with just this crappy little pistol here. So what is this? Don't know. And, you know, you have these procedurally generated rooms and stuff. I've made it to the first boss a few times. I can't beat him. He's too hard. Now, if this had just been a pretty standard action-adventure game or a Metroidvania, I would have loved it. But so much potential just wasted on this crappy roguelike that 90% of players can't can't even be like well, I, well actually you know I can't back up that number but hang on um 
let me just see here. If I look at some trophy data here, let me see. They're all hidden trophies. Okay, so... Yeah, how, let's see if I can figure out how many people actually beat the game. Nope, they're all hidden trophies, so I couldn't even tell you how many people were actually able to beat it. So fine, you know what, 90%, that's just off the top of my head, that's probably wrong, but you get what I'm saying. Like, it's a very difficult game that a lot of people probably gave up on, myself included. And I've played some pretty hard games before. So, where did, now, where does the game want me to go? I have a map, which can be hard to read at times. Okay, but I was already over here, so... Oh, I have to drop down here. Now, you don't take fall damage unless you fall in an actual bottomless pit. And... Alright, so let me do this first. Like, this is like another player who died here. I think. Yeah. No idea. No idea how that person died, but if you hit Avenge, you get attacked by some brutally difficult monster here. See? And this is the game. See this? Like, this is if you try to do that, so I don't recommend doing that, but th this, is, this is the game, right? This is the first biome. This is, hey, Oh, it's too hard for you? Too bad. You're not going to get any meaningful upgrades. You don't get increases to maximum health or damage or anything like that. So anytime you see one of those hologram, you know, bloodstain type things, just ignore it. Okay, so now look, but it's like, it's procedurally generated, so now I'm in a completely different room. A totally different map, and it's like, alright, I mean, if it was the same every time... I could eventually memorize it and master it, I'm sure, and then, then it would be maybe too easy, but... You do get these waypoints here. I've already gone into that house and gotten a cutscene, so the story here is you're trapped on some planet, and it's also a time loop. And that's all I know, because I can't get any further. She's an astronaut from Earth who's lost in space. I, I don't know. So, anywho. And it's a real shame, because I really like Housemark. I really liked, you know, um, Super Stardust HD, Resogun, Next Machina. Those are games I've streamed before. I've had plenty of positive things to say about those games. They're just pretty standard shoot 'em up, bullet hell type games. How do I just fire a normal bullet? What is... And it tries to use... Alright. Right, so... It tries to use adaptive triggers, which I shut off because I think they're stupid, but basically... To fire a regular shot, you've got to partially hold down the left trigger. If you hold the tri left trigger down all the way, then that uses your charged attack that has a pretty hefty cooldown on it, in my opinion. So if you want to aim down the sights, you just gently press the left trigger, or you just fire from the hip. So it's not really a third-person shooter, per se, in, in that sense. Like, you can't really aim down the sights like you can in other games. You do get health pickups, but they don't give you that much health, and they're not as common as they ought to be, I think. But these are just regular enemies, too. Like, they're... These aren't even, like, bosses, you know what I mean? So regular enemies can kick your ass, especially when you get swarmed. And you may walk into a room where th this happens, where it's like, okay, like... Wh you know... Yeah, so I've seen speedruns where people just use the sword, so I'm gonna see how well that works for me. Although it probably won't. But this, it, like, if they started me with the shotgun or the 
assault rifle, maybe, I don't know, maybe I'd have a better chance of getting through these early fights, but... It's, you know, as much as I love Resogun, Nex Machina, Stardust, it's like, this is not like that at all. So how did this game get amazing reviews? I don't know. Maybe because it was a launch title from a very skimpy lineup and there wasn't much else to play at the time. Maybe it was the graphics. Maybe it's the fact that, you know, a lot of these professional reviewers and employees of the big companies, they just play games all the time and they're biased. Of course, any game is easy for them because they've, they've seen it all. They've played it all. Of course, they're not going to complain about difficulty. Oh, can't get there. So, more often than not, you're just going to avoid fights as much as possible, and you get currency that you can use to buy stuff that's only for that run, though. And then you can unlock, potentially unlock items that may show up in future playthroughs. So you do get, the, there is something you can spend between runs, but I mean, you don't have the traditional roguelike kind of stuff you'd expect. Like, okay, you know, you can keep increasing your health, your damage, your defense, that sort of thing. That doesn't exist in this game. So they kind of drop the ball in that respect. Like, the game just doesn't really get easier as far as I'm aware. And what good is it to put, you know, your easier content later in the game? Like, that doesn't make sense. Like, why would you do that? So if you can keep going without getting hit, you get adrenaline, which increases your abilities, but it's like, okay, that doesn't do me any good because I can't stop getting hit. What is that supposed to do for me? Then you have other um, traps and obstacles that can really screw you up. And then you get these keys that you can use to open certain doors and stuff. And there's a good atmosphere to the game in terms of the music and just the overall art and graphic style, right? But, again, I, I can't beat the first boss, so what, you know, the rest of the game might as well not even exist. I, I can't get to it. Yeah, and, and so you spend obelites but you never have enough to get what you want like very rarely do you actually have the hundreds needed to buy items and stuff um so i don't know so i'll just tr do my best to explain things as they come up that this won't be a very long stream this pistol that I started with on this run has a different special ability but you see how the the uh, things you collect they're not they're not persistent though if you don't get them quick enough they disappear and then there's another currency that you can spend to cleanse cursed objects and parasitic objects and st I don't know it's weird so when the game does give you potential upgrades there's always a trade-off there's usually a you know, a detriment along with whatever bonus you're supposed to get. But sometimes you'll go into a room that just has no enemies, and then you'll go into another room that has, like, 20 of them. But I've yet to have, like, that one really good run that can carry me through this. And when the game first came out, people were upset because they'd be, you know, 90 minutes into a run and then they'd have to stop playing and there was no, like, save feature. Yeah, so you get ether is important. Obelites are important.
All right, so now I've got my adrenaline level up to three, but the second I get hit, it's all gone. And yeah, I'm not going to fall for that again. The sword gets rid of these barriers, so... Your first couple of runs aren't bad because that's where there's some actual story content. And then you get a couple of, you know, important items, like the sword. What the hell is this? Oh. Okay. So yeah, amazing graphics, but... I don't know, the gameplay is a little frustrating. And then the only way to mitigate damage is to not get hit, and you just have this one little dash. So. <clears throat> Pardon me. And what is this? Damage Siphon Data Cube. Item designed for future cycle. Yeah, so you can unlock items that may appear in future runs. It's like, okay, fair enough, but... And then I like that you can scan the environment like that. I like that you actually have, like, a good map. Because some games don't have maps anymore. So what is this? And I don't know what this does. I can't use those yet. I didn't get the item, so... So if this was, like, more of a traditional shoot 'em up then eventually you could kind of memorize the levels, right? And you could get a little further each time. That's how Stardust was. Resogone was set up where, when you died, you would just go back to the start of whichever level you're on. And then you would get, you know, go back, get three lives, and I see a malignant key. So, infected with malignancy. So if I, I can spend six ether to cleanse it, which I, I don't even know if I have six ether. But if I pick it up, there's a high probability of getting a malfunction. So now I have to kill 20 enemies or else I can't pick up new weapons. And that's very detrimental because the pistol sucks. There, I got hit. I got hit. Survive a killing. So then, yeah, you do get these parasites that can sometimes have positive effects, but you may also get a negative effect along with it. So, like, on runs where I find useful items, I end up dying before I get to the boss. And then I had one run where I got to the boss, like, right away, and of course couldn't beat him because I didn't have anything to, you know, didn't have any bonuses. So, you know, I also really liked Risk of Rain 2, even though that can be a difficult and frustrating game. So guess what? <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. Can't change weapons. I have to go kill 19 enemies all of whom may potentially kill me. So... Sure. Alright, and now I can't hurt any of them because you can see they're getting invincibility. It's like, why is this same game so fucking hard? It doesn't make sense. So regular enemies can kick your ass if you're not careful, but then every time one of these stronger enemies shows up, you're screwed. This game sucks. <laughs> it's too hard. Wasted potential. Reviewed by... Yeah, made and reviewed by sadomasochists.
can't pick. <laughs> so why did they give me that particular detriment? Because they knew there were weapons that I would want. Like, that this run was designed just to fuck with me. So if I can somehow kill 13 more enemies without dying, then I can get one of those better weapons. But, you know, fat chance of that happening at this point. If there were more healing items, or if they were more potent, that would be helpful. But yeah, can't pick up any weapons. And you certainly don't want to try to beat the boss with just the pistol. That thing sucks. Enhanced overload, whoop de doo yeah, all upcoming weapons improved. Okay, I can't. Do you mean the weapons I can't pick up? <laughs> and you could say, oh, well, gee, like, nobody made you pick up that malignant key thing. It's like, th that is true, but. Now, maybe this would be easier if you didn't have to reload the gun, you know? Obviously, I haven't played in a while, so my skills aren't quite there. I don't quite have the rhythm down. But... I don't know. The reason I'm playing it now is obviously to do this episode, but also because... I'm getting rid of the PlayStation Premium... PlayStation Plus Premium membership because it's a fucking waste of money. The PS1 and PSP releases have been pretty inconsistent in terms of quality, but also it just... I don't know, there just aren't that many of them. There aren't that many of them, and some of them just aren't that good. Um, and then, you know, I, I'm going to drop down to just the Essential tier only so that I can continue to play all the plus games that I've added to my account over the past several years. And this is on the extra tier, because I bought the game when it came out, I sold it, tried it again when it got added to plus, and then it's just like, nah. <laughs> this game hates me. <laughs> What? A, this is bullshit. This is complete bullshit. Dead. So I did have that parasite that revived me, but... That means... Yeah, and, and now you give me one of these. Like, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Hang on. Repair efficiency doubled. Okay. <clears throat> and you get weapon proficiency, which is supposed to be helpful. So now how do I get back down there? How do I get back into the room with the weapons? Ugh. Oh, down here. But see, you don't want to waste ether on a run that's probably not going to amount to anything. So... Now I can't remember where that hole in the ground was. Oh well. Well, 
Let's pick this up. Of course, this is the level zero item. All right, now let's go back in here. Uh, yeah, I'd rather have the Spit Maw Blaster, and I like the Shock Stream special. All right. But this is it. This is what 90% of your runs are going to be. Most of your runs are going to be like, gee, I have no chance of beating that stupid boss, even if I somehow get to him. Complex entities, I, I don't know what that means, but sure. Let's see what this does. <laughs> Why not? So my plus premium membership expires like in a, like next week. I'm going to drop down to Essential, and then I won't be able to play this anymore. Not that I want to. Okay. What did that... What did that do? No freaking clue. Yeah, these are uh, waypoints that you can jump to. And it does tell you where the boss is, I guess, but you don't know how many rooms are going to be in between there. And some rooms are, uh, some rooms you can just run straight through, but then other rooms it's like, no, you can't. You have to fight everything before you can get out. I tend to do better if I can get the Spitmaw or the other one. I just call it Shotgun and Rifle. Requires Crimson Key. Sure. Or whatever that is. Who knows. So now I'm going to go to the right, and then I'm going to have to go up and to the right. And hopefully that'll take me where I want to go. So I loved Resogun, and that was a PS4 launch title, and that also went straight to PlayStation Plus. Although I think I ended up buying it at some point, because I had a lapse in membership and really wanted to play it at one point. But like, I was so excited about that game, and I played it so much when I got the PS4. Even though I got the PS4 a year after I came out, I was still able to add it to the account and then play it at that point. And it's still one of my favorite PS4 games. Although it did later get ported to PS3 and Vita. But then this game is like, yeah, I was so excited. Like, oh, cool, Housemark is doing another launch title on the PS5. But it's like, well, whoop de doo <laughs> It's like, well, this isn't what I wanted, you know? So... Insufficient ether and sufficient ovalites. Yes, yeah, so then you have a f you have fabricators that will get you various items, but I don't know what they do. And then I found this obelisk a bunch of times and analyzed it and learned some of the alien language here. So, I need to go to the left here, if it'll let me. Ah, uh, th th those guys are assholes.
Um, yeah, and then those fucking things, right? Oops. And I keep pressing the wrong button to heal. Not that it matters. Repair efficiency only matters if I can actually find a healing item. Oh, hey, actually, that's pretty good. Yeah, these guys are, are assholes. Yeah, those guys are assholes. And... I died. Okay. Oh, that's what they're... Okay. The reconstruction chamber... will revive you. I think only once, though. Okay, got it. So, th yeah, even though I got two revival items on this run, it doesn't matter because I still can't get anywhere near this damn boss. Even if I get to him, I can't beat him, so what difference does it make? I guess I'll buy a healing item with the... The, the Obolites do not carry over between runs. But this is it. I only had enough to buy, like, one item. Oh, actually, maybe I can get this. So you have some... You have artifacts that can help or hinder or both. And then you have parasites that can help or hinder or both. And sometimes you just don't know what you're going to get. Life is like a parasitic organism. You never know what you're gonna get. Yeah, but while I'm focused on this fucking guy, I'm getting attacked from other directions. Okay. You can only carry one item at a time. So, all right, a whole lot of good that does me. If you'd open before I'm dead, thank you. Spitmaw Blaster, I can get a modified Sarnarm that has a... Tracker Swarm. I could rather have the shotgun. So yeah, so if you can make it to this hole in the ground, you drop down, and here's a boss. If I could have made it to him without using the two revivals that I was lucky enough to get, then maybe I could have beat him, but... Yeah, he's got like four life bars, in case you're wondering. <laughs> and I've seen speed runs where they just kill him with the sword, and it's like, I don't know how they do it. There you go, so... Reset again. No upgrades between runs. So that's it. You just try again. That's all you can do, right? You know, maybe if I could start with a better weapon, maybe I'd have a shot here. Maybe I wouldn't have taken as much damage in some of those fights if I didn't get that curse that wouldn't let me pick up better weapons.
I mean, and the soundtrack is fine and it's appropriate for what's happening, but... Sure, let's just open it, because who knows. So, healing items won't work as well until I use a consumable item. Okay. But I just picked up a consumable item, so... Alright, maybe they're being nice on this run, too. So he's way over there. <sighs> oh, jeez. That's our trap! Where's Admiral Akbar when you need him? I cleansed one malfunction, but... Yeah, and now reduced health until I click resin. What the fuck is resin? I don't even know what that is. Let alone how to, how to collect it. Okay, so I just screwed myself, right? So maybe the key to this game is just don't try to get... Just don't pick anything up, right? Is that what I'm missing here? Are you supposed to just not pick up anything that might help you? Because it'll probably just hurt you instead? Don't know. Oh, that's resin. Okay, resin is the stuff that heals you. Got it. Now I know. I forgot the name of the thing. But, do I get my maximum health back? No. I don't get healed in the process. It's like, what the fuck? Alright, so I just got a carbine, which is, you know, a faster firing rifle. Yeah, see, like, if I could start each run with this gun, I think I'd be better able to fight some of these enemies, you know? But they always start you with a crappy pistol. It's just too many enemies in this room, and I don't know how to get out of it. How many enemies are in this fucking room? Oh, and there's one of these assholes in here too. Gee, I guess I should have fucking known, huh? That's it, so... I've died... How many times in 40 minutes? Right? 
This game sucks. Who is this even for? I don't know. I mastered all the Dark Souls games and Bloodborne and Elden Ring. I grew up playing NES and Genesis games. I beat the original Metroid in under two hours without even getting all the items. You know, I beat Zelda 2 multiple times. This game is too hard. You know, offering a lower difficulty does not hurt the people who aren't going to use it. It doesn't cheapen the experience. It's like, don't you want people to be able to, like, play your game? And this game got all these nominations for the story or the narrative or whatever. And it's like, what narrative? I didn't get to see any of it. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. So, there you go. Um. Okay. <laughs> See, now I'm just fucking up because I don't care. Alright, so I can't go this way. How was I supposed to know that? <laughs> like, I don't fucking care anymore. This game sucks. There's two kinds of runs. Runs where you get good stuff and you just die anyways. And runs where you just get nothing but garbage and you just can't... And you just die, 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 and that's it. So... How do I get out of here? Enhanced overload, I just used it. Like, I think maybe the cooldown could be shorter on some of these overload attacks. I think maybe the pistol shouldn't have to reload after only like 12 shots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Maybe if the clip was more than 12 bullets. I don't know. I'm just trying to think of things that would make this game tolerable for me. And I can't hurt enemies in with red shields. I have to go in here and sword them. Which is fine. Okay, I don't have a crimson key, so I don't know what the hell that's supposed to do for me. Yeah, so every few runs you may have enough ether to actually do something meaningful with it, but you may also just end up wasting it. Every couple of runs maybe you'll have enough obelites to actually buy something cool, if you can actually find a shop. That sort of thing. Yeah. And that's just a slap in the face. It's like, oh, you're struggling? You're almost dead? Here, have a good weapon, finally. Here, you know what? I'm gonna take all of these fucking malignant parasites. Who gives a fuck? Fabricator cost increase, who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I thought I was close enough to sword him, but yeah, there you go. That's the game mocking me. Here, have an awesome weapon when you're about to die. I'll do one more run and then I'm fucking done with this game forever. I hate this game. The near-perfect review scores do not make sense to me. Yeah, and, and that has perfect homing on it. How am I supposed to avoid that? Perfect homing and you have no idea when it's gonna strike. What is this? Gimme. Um, I just went in a big fucking circle, huh? And sometimes there's just so many bullets on the screen that you cannot possibly avoid getting hit. It sucks. That's an interesting item. I get healing instead of obelites. Now, if that was a permanent upgrade, you know, or if, you know, but why is it like timed like that? If that would last, like persist through the entire run, I'd be fine. If that was some like a permanent upgrade or relic that I could equip with some kind of detriment to balance it, sure, that's fine too, but. That's not how the game works, though. The game is meant to be hard as fuck. Um, I, I just want to, just want to get that item. How do I get the item? There we go. All right, cool. And like I said, don't even bother. Don't even touch these. Just don't. Because they always summon some insanely powerful monster that you cannot possibly beat. Or, I mean, I successfully did it once, and it's like, I was half dead by the end, and it just wasn't worth it. Yeah, see how I'm, I'm doing all this extra damage now, because I haven't gotten hit, but... It's like, yeah, but if I was skilled enough to avoid getting hit, I wouldn't need the extra help. Doesn't make sense. This idea of punishing players for not being good enough, like, that's stupid. Oh yeah, these ones, uh... These enemies... Drop a whole bunch of, uh... Money for you. Which is good. Yeah, now if you have... If you have a particular item and you find another copy of it, then they will stack. What? 
All right, yeah. I wanted to pick that up. All right, I got some healing, good. Now where do I go? What the hell is this? Fabricate, sure. All right. Repairs augment, okay. I mean, that could be helpful. So in many cases, I just jump and dodge just to be sure that I won't get hit. And even then, there's no guarantee. Yeah, exactly. There's a lockdown. I have to kill every enemy in this room to be able to go get through there. It's bullshit. And thankfully, it doesn't take that long to reload. What is this? All right, good. Give me. Yeah, so the game gets significantly easier when you get it. One of the better guns, but it's just pistol, shotgun, assault rifle. That's pretty much it. Unless there's more weapons in later biomes, but I, I don't know. Couldn't tell you. Alright, so the only defense against those flying dudes with the homing laser is to just try to kill them before you get hit. Alright. So... I need to get up there. Now, if if I could actually beat the first boss, then I'm sure I would be feeling, I would feel inclined to keep playing. And and I hear that the game gets easier if you can just beat the first area, then it gets easier. It's like, well, oh my God, really? What is that? There you go. So sometimes you get a shield, that that can be helpful, right? Asshole, take that. Now let me out of this godforsaken room. Yeah, and once again, the room with the house. So there are certain rooms that always reoccur in every run. You get a key that lets you go into the house, and then there's a cutscene and stuff, and whatever. What does this do? As a personal item, it doesn't want to let you go. We'll, we'll... Okay, like, what does that do for me? Nothing. You know? It's a, a personal item, like, I don't care. Screw that. All right. Area in lockdown, of course it is.
What the fuck are you? Holy shit, dude. That's... This is the run killer. I was actually doing pretty... Pretty well this time. Until this asshole showed up. Yes, you... You walk into the wrong room and that's it. Your run is over. And yes, I see this, but can't get it, so it doesn't matter. Okay, not in lockdown anymore. Not that it matters. Repair efficiency doubled, like, but then you don't give me any healing items, so what does it matter? transported to an unknown location. A lot of good that did me. So I think Housemark had said a couple years ago that they weren't going to be doing any more arcade-style shoot-'em-ups because it wasn't profitable or more likely that Sony just wouldn't fund it and then we get this instead. And unfortunately this gets good reviews so now this is probably all we're going to get forever. So I'm told that there is a healing item in this room but... Can I actually get it? I did repair efficiency doubled. I pick up the healing item. Nothing fucking happened. Why do you give me healing items if they're not going to fucking work? I don't get it. That one worked. So th this is the impossible run now because they just keep giving me these lockdown rooms and now it's lockdown and everything's invincible. Like, what the fuck? This wasn't tested properly. This, sh like, some of these runs are fucking impossible. There's no way to manually reload, as far as I'm aware. And as you can see, like, I'm not terrible at this game. It's just... It's just one mistake, and... There goes all your life, you know? There goes your whole run. Oh my god. Another one of those? Like, what? what is going on here? Nope. Goodbye. How did you follow me? I didn't know they could follow you into new rooms. That's bullshit.
Oh, there's one of these guys, too. Seriously? The two toughest enemies in the same fucking room. Fuck this game. This is like the, one of the most broken games I've ever played in my life. Alright, that's it. I'm done. See you next time where I complain about another beloved broken game, right? <laughs> Good night.